and we're watching the longtime star Bobby Wagner. He picked up a sack last week as part of an eight tackle game. It's the Seahawks and the Lions, and it's all up next. First open in 2002, there's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Today, after a topsy-turvy opening weekend, it's on week two, and we've got a good one here. And it's going to be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Detroit Lions. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. They come in off a loss in the opener last week. That one was on the road. Now they get their first taste here of home cooking. And what they're hoping to do is feed off the energy of the home crowd. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. And they are led out there by their mobile quarterback. And this would be his second NFL start. Last week was about what you'd expect to see from a rookie quarterback. Had some good moments, but not enough to lead his guys to victory. Now we'll have to see how he handles adversity because on the college level, he didn't lose a whole lot of games. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Jackson Smith and Jigba, the one he was after there. But it's going to be second down. You talk about this Lions defense. Uh, they've been pretty much a mess against the pass number 31 in the league. With that lack of pass defense, they do make up for in run defense. They're a top 10 unit against some people trying to move the ball on the ground. But this is a passing league. So there's a the conundrum for them. How do they get better defending the pass? That's a really in containing a quarterback on the run. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll set up a throw. Now a fan with a catch on the crossing route. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. Now back to throw. He'll buy some time right. That's caught inside the 20. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. They'll get 34 yards there. We spent a lot of time talking about what's going on on the field. How about off the field with the evaluation? And they spent a lot of time saying, we've got to get a rookie in here who has big playability. And that's exactly what we're seeing here early in his career. Drafted him in the spring. Here he is early in the fall making an impact. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. A man who played collegiately over at East Lansing, it's Kenneth Walker to third. And a good physical run that time. He's going to wind up gaining five on that one. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second and five. Flushed out right. Touchdown. Their mobile, agile quarterback. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. And this is a balancing act for a head coach with a rookie quarterback. You've got to walk a line with him. You don't want him getting happy feet, but you also don't want to rein in what worked for him in college. And here, he pulls it down, takes it himself, and takes it into the end zone. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. So a pretty nice throw right there from the rookie. And this, of course, is game number two of his NFL career. His guys did not get the win, Charles, in the opener. But what did you see from him last week? Well, I think all things considered, he played pretty well. And I don't think I pinned the loss on him. But there's no question, this is a learning process. And that was step one. And he's hoping on the road to glory. And 22 more yards there and another first down. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away. And the pressure gets there. He'll go down. It's a sack. And he is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Second and 13. Toward the sideline. Look at that catch, dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 23 yards on the play. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here, and now they're set up with a first and goal. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Second and nine now. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the game. The coverage has been tight all day long, and it's certainly going to keep up the score here. Now third and goal following incompletions on first and second down. Back to throw again. Rolling to his left. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. A great effort. With his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. He had the touchdown run on the last drive, his second of this first half, as his guys start here with a first and ten. They'll look to throw now on first down, escaping the pressure right. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Able to find a lot of empty space there. Picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. No shortage of impressive moments from him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. Steps away. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll get started over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. And it's the Falcons who are out in front in the second quarter. Bijan Robinson accounting for the lone scoring thus far as he's cashed in with a touchdown run. We'll stay in the AFC North as we head over to Cincinnati to check on the Bengals at home 
at Paycor Stadium. And you can see, currently they trail in that ball game. J.K. Dobbins with a touchdown run. Lastly, let's get up to Buffalo to check on the Bills. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. The Raiders locked in a tight one, but this is a game you feel they've got to have. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could... Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. And they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago. And I think even though they trail in the game now, I would consider that a win for their defense, and that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench. Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. And this play still live. He faked the spike. Going to throw it. He lets it fly for Lockett. And that'll be caught. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big pickup of 38. And how about what just happened there? Just a total breakdown defensively. They're thinking he's going to spike this, so they let their guard down. But he never had any intention of stopping the clock. He wanted to throw the football. And he caught him napping, and this turned into a huge play. Now this offense hoping to avoid the 0-2 start. Now they trail, but they've got a first and 10 here. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And that, oh, nearly picked off. But would have been a great time for their first interception of the game. Instead, it's second down. They'll look to throw here. It's complete to Lockett. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Lockett is a beacon of consistency for the Seahawks offense. His last four seasons, he's reached 1,000 yards, had at least eight touchdowns, and only once has he had more than two drops. Continues to be underrated, but not by defenses who have to face him. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Here's Walker. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Kenneth Walker, his second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Seahawks, on the final play of the third quarter, have taken the lead. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. So all eyes on this Seahawks offense. Down by a field goal, 2.19 to play. Plenty of time here. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning as they've got it first and 10. They'll set up to throw. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. Now they, they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? This is first and ten. They'll look to throw. They'll find Metcalf. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 
And now all of a sudden, the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Maybe you pull the reins back here a bit? Yeah, a little bit because you got to make sure that you don't score too quickly. He'll look to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And, partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last-ditch effort to try and steal this win away. shifts to the Seahawks offense trailing by a field goal 25 seconds remaining now they need at minimum three points out of this as they come up first and ten back to throw and it's knocked away and incomplete They'll try again here, second and ten. On the move to his left. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first, and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation, everything is sped up. The intensity, the thinking, everyone's movement. But for a quarterback, he has to continue to do what we call flatliner. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. They've got to burn the timeout, and they do. But a costly, costly sack. And now maybe just time for one final play. Here's second down. They'll drop the throw. Oh, and that nearly ended it. That should have been intercepted, but he cannot correct it. And that is a lifeline here with third down coming up. Nearly an interception, and that one's picked off. It's over, so nearly so life, so to speak. A lot of times when you're in coverage, you're so focused on the man and the coverage that sometimes the ball, if it arrives, it surprises you. That may have happened to him in that situation. just beyond midfield for one final shot but couldn't get it done and they suffered the loss yeah and you mentioned how they had a chance on that final play and getting into midfield gave them that opportunity